if we build artificial general intelligence, that'll be the biggest event in the history of life on Earth. The alien intelligence inside a computer system that has control over the planet, the day it arrives. And science fiction books and movies have set it up in advance. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. Hal, a super intelligent computer. We'd call it AI today. My character, Dave, was the astronaut in one of the most prophetic films ever made about the threat posed to humanity by artificial intelligence. Hal was science fiction, but now AI is all around us. Artificial intelligence isn't the future. AI is already here. This week, a robot ran for mayor in a small Japanese town. The White House says it is creating a new task force to focus on artificial intelligence. Google has already announced plans to invest more in AI research. IBM sending an artificial intelligence robot into space. Because of my small role in the conversation, I understand that we're on a journey, one that starts with narrow AI machines that perform specific tasks better than we can. But the AI of science fiction is artificial general intelligence, machines that can do everything better than us. Narrow AI is really like an idiot savant to the extreme, where it can do something like multiply numbers together really fast, way better than any human, but it can't do anything else whatsoever. But AGI, artificial general intelligence, which doesn't exist yet, is instead intelligence that can do everything as well as humans can. So what happens if we do create AGI? Science fiction authors have warned us it could be dangerous. And they're not the only ones. I think people should be really concerned about it. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, super intelligence that it will necessarily always have the same goals in mind that we do. I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. The end of the human race. Tomorrow, if the headline said an artificial intelligence has been manufactured that's as intelligent or more intelligent than human beings, people would argue about it, but I don't think they'd be surprised because science fiction has helped us imagine all kinds of unimaginable things. Experts are divided about the impact AI will have on our future and whether or not Hollywood is helping us plan for it. Our dialogue has really been hijacked by Hollywood because the Terminator makes a better blockbuster than AI being good or AI being neutral or AI being confused. Technology here, and AI is no different, is a tool. I like to think of it as a fancy pencil. And so what pictures we draw with it, that's up to us as a society. We don't have to do what AI tells us. We tell AI what to do. I think Hollywood films do help the conversation. Someone needs to be thinking ahead of, of what the consequences are. But just as we can't really imagine what the actual science of the future is gonna be like, I don't think we've begun to really think about all of the possible futures which logically spring out of this technology. Artificial intelligence has the power to change society. A growing chorus of criticism is highlighting the dangers of handing control to machines. There's going to be a lot of change coming. The larger long-term concern is that humanity will be sort of shunted aside. This is something Stanley Kubrick and many others were worried about 50 years ago, right? It's happening. How do we gauge the urgency of this conversation? 
if people saw on radar right now that an alien spaceship was approaching Earth and it was 25 years away, we would be mobilized to prepare for that alien's arrival 25 years from now. But that's exactly the situation that we're in with artificial intelligence. Could be 25 years, could be 50 years, but an alien intelligence will arrive and we should be prepared. Well, gentlemen, meet Tobor, an electronic simulacrum of a man. Oh, gosh. Oh, gee, Wilkers. Even though much work remains before he's completed, he is already a sentient being. Back in 1956, when the term artificial intelligence first came about, the original goals of artificial intelligence were human-level intelligence. He does look almost kind, doesn't he? Over time, that's proved to be really difficult. I think eventually we will have human-level intelligence from machines. But it may be a few hundred years. It's going to take a while. And so people are getting a little overexcited about the future capabilities. And now, Electro, I command you to walk back. Back. Almost every generation, people have got so enthusiastic. They watch 2001, they fall in love with Hal, they think, yeah, give me six weeks, I'll get this sorted. <laughs> it doesn't happen, and everyone gets upset. So what's changed in AI research? The difference with the AI we have today, and the reason that AI suddenly took this big leap forward, is the internet. That, that is their world. Tonight, the information superhighway in one of its main thoroughfares, an online network called Internet. In 1981, only 213 computers were hooked to the Internet. As the new year begins, an estimated two and a half million computers will be on the network. AIs need to eat, just like sheep need grass, AIs need data. And the great prairies of data are on the Internet. That's what it is. And they said, you know what, let's just let them loose out there. And suddenly the AIs came to life. Imagine thousands of talking robots able to move as one unit, taking on crime, fires, and natural disasters. Artificial intelligence platform Amper has created the first album entirely composed and produced by artificial intelligence. Next week, Christie's will be the first auction house to offer artwork created by artificial intelligence. Driverless cars, said to be in our not-so-distant future. So even though we don't have AGI or human-level intelligence yet, are we ready to give autonomy to the machines we do have? Should self-driving cars make ethical decisions? That is the growing debate as the technology moves closer towards mainstream reality. This idea of whether or not we can embed ethics into machines, whether or not they're automated machines or autonomous machines. I'm not sure we've got that figured out. If you have a self-driving car, it's gonna to have to make ethical decisions. I mean, a classic one people have been thinking a lot about is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of trolley problems. The trolley problem. The trolley problem. The trolley problem. The trolley problem. In the trolley problem, whether or not a driverless car is going to save the driver or run over a group of school children crossing the road. Will the car go right and hit the old lady or will it go left and kill the, the four young people? Either kill five people standing on the bus stop or kill yourself. That's an ethical decision that has to be made in the moment, too fast for any person to get in there. And so it's the software in your self-driving car is gonna make that kind of ethical decision. Who decides that? 